Hello, thank you so much for joining us today to learn about how to protect your assets, insurance for rental properties. Not only does this team that we've worked with for several years do rental property asset protection, but they can combine everything and they can come to that topic at another day. But this is one of the most important parts in how to protect your future. Um, I'm going to go on to the next slide to share a little bit more about who I am. My name is Tanya Lorimore. Oh, maybe I'm not going to the next slide yet. But I am Tanya Lorimore. I've been with Marshall Reddick Real Estate since 2012. I absolutely love what I do. I'm a licensed real estate broker and I uh, own investment property. I grew up in a long line of uh, both sides of my family. Grandparents taught my parents on both sides how to invest in the power of real estate. So it's always captured my attention. So all that being said, of course, numbers and how things worked um, has always been my favorite. Thing. So I went on to Cal State Long Beach and got my finance real estate law uh, degree. So my emphasis in finance. A little bit more about who I am so you guys can have an idea of um, all the clients that I've worked with over the years. I average about 85 sales per year um, and to date 679. Um, I need to update that number. I believe it's growing. Um, just had five local closings in August, in addition to all my out-of-state properties. Um, so if you guys have any questions, feel free to take a picture of this slide. My cell phone number's on there. I'm here to help you. Um, but more exciting, I'm going to share on the next slide a little bit more about Marshall Reddick Real Estate who we are as a company, what we help people do. So we're not just a typical brokerage. We help, yes, as a brokerage, we're in many um, states across the US, but we also do property management, um, single family, two to four units or more locally here in California. And I'm gonna have a picture pretty soon about um, all the other areas that we're in um, so once we help you find an investment property, we have the most important part, the property management to help you manage and babysit that property. So a little bit more about private financing is simply that if you can't qualify conventionally, perhaps you have over the conventional loan amount of 10 loans we um, we're able to help you do private lending so that you can continue to buy whether that's in your solo 401k self-directed IRA or if you just want to quote unquote be the bank and earn anywhere between 7 to 12 percent on your money backed by real estate in the first position so we've been around since 1979 helping people learn about real estate and buy to um, you know, continue educating the public. And that's really what we're known for, which is why our doors have stayed open. And we've done such a fine job, I think, because the majority of my business is repeats and referrals. So um, the free education is just a bonus uh, to continue you know, serving you all. So the next slide that you guys saw just a moment ago are all the markets that we're in. So yes, at one point we've been in all of these states. So we do have connections in every single market. So, but right now where we have the best options for you would be in these fine markets here. They're all landlord friendly states except for California. On the next slide, we're going to see how Marshall Reddick Real Estate chooses how to invest. So it's not just one of those things, it's not where we enjoyed visiting grandma on summer vacations. It's specific to these criteria. Is there a rental demand? How long does it take to fill a vacancy? Is there economic diversity? Like it's not a Detroit where it's just a car industry, right? 
housing affordability. Is it landlord friendly? Absolutely. Um, we usually go into places where there are universities. And then of course, as I shared before, strong property management. And so on the next slide, a little bit about what you can expect from having a consultation with an advisor like myself is this lovely, almost full circle. Um, here we go. Goal setting. Why do you want to invest? How are you going to get there? When are you going to do it? What you want. There's so many different classifications of property. We help you identify what's going to meet your needs, which will then put you where you want to buy in one of those 16 markets. Um, and then I introduce you to all the key players. One of the best key players here is the inch is the insurance, right? So that's what we're here to learn more about. I have Stan Dreckman and Michael McAllister here, you know, as you can see, over 37 years of experience. And we we just absolutely truly adore them. Nothing but great feedback on my end, which is why we have such a long-standing relationship with them. So I'm going to pass the mic over basically to them and they're going to share about all the cool features that they have to offer. Thank you, Tanya. This is uh, Michael McAllister sitting here with Stan Dreckman this evening. Good evening. And like Tanya said, we've been in the business for several years. We've been with Marshall Reddick for over 20 years now. My background, I did real estate and property management for over 20 years before I got into the insurance business. So we do understand property management. We do understand real estate and cash flow. Uh, obviously, um, we talk both insurance and real estate. We understand the Marshall Reddick product. It's a fabulous product. And we're going to kind of tell you how to protect your asset after you buy it. So why would you want to go with Huggins Dreckman? We use safe Co and Travelers pretty predominantly for a lot of the out-of-state properties because of what they can provide on a policy. We do the research into the properties so that we can properly insure them. We examine all the sources that we have at our hands, and we have a lot more than you guys have looking at the internet. Uh, but then we also plug everything into our Safeco and Travelers program to get you guys the best rates and with the best possible protection for your asset. And we're going to go deep into how to protect your asset. That's the whole idea of the insurance. So here we're talking about, you know, to keep you safe from a financial loss. Because if you're buying a rental property and that property burns down and you don't have it insured, you're completely out of pocket and you're starting from ground zero. So we're here to help you securely rebuild your property after an event and not lose any money. And that's the real key is, if you have a kitchen fire and your tenant moves out, you don't, you're not going to be collecting rent. You don't want to lose that money, and we're going to explain that to you. So, landlord insurance. It's going to cover a one to a four family home, so we can go up to a fourplex. Okay, it's going to cover the basic structure. It's going to cover contents. Okay, it's also going to cover your loss of rental income, and that's a very important one that we're going to touch on throughout the night but it basically is going to cover you if your tenant moves out to have a claim repaired, the insurance company is going to pay your rent during that time frame. And then of course, the very most important is your liability and you're going to want extra liability. We're going to talk about umbrella policies down the road, but you definitely want to have the liability protection in case you get sued. And we'll get the, into that a little more in depth as well. So your basic kind of claims that happen and they're covered are basically your wind, your fire, your hail, your vandalism if you have the proper coverage, water damage from broken pipes as long as your property is not vacant, uh, and then there's a whole lot, a lot of other ways to do it. Uh, one thing to note though on the bottom, uh, flood and earthquake policies are excluded from your landlord and your homeowner's policies. They are completely separate policies and you really need to look into those. One thing we'd like to mention is on the kind of claims that we cover, the fire, wind, hail, vandalism, water damage, those are your four most likely claims when you are um, a landlord. That's really what you're going to see. Occasionally, you see the one-offs, the trees falling over on top of the roof you know, in a windstorm, although there again, it's wind. 
you'll see other crazy things that will happen that, that we will cover. But these, these are the basics. But what we want to make sure you do understand is policy covers a whole lot more than that. These policies are extremely broad. In fact, what we look at more so than what we cover is what we don't cover. And that's what Michael already mentioned is we don't cover the flood and earthquake. Those are separate. But anyway, let's keep going and check this thing out because, as you can tell, I get hyped up on this stuff. This is good stuff. <laughs> so basically we're going to get into liability coverage here a little bit. Uh, why do you need the liability coverage? And why do we always recommend you get half a million dollars of liability coverage for your rental property? As a minimum. As a minimum. And you get an umbrella policy for a million dollars on top of that. And what that's covering is if your neighbor slips. So it gives you a basic brief thing. But if you are you walk out, your landlord, you have a landlord policy, your tenant walks out and slips and falls and breaks their neck, they're going to sue you and you're going to need this liability coverage. It's one of the most important there is. And I could give you a million examples, but it happens all the time. Okay. Uh, the very last thing you really want to look at, not all policies offer this. Safeco offers this. It's called wrongful eviction. Uh, and that, that if you're a landlord and you evict them improperly, you will have insurance coverage for that. But if you use Marshall Reddick Real Estate as your property management company, they'll protect you from that as well. So here's a basic policy, and it kind of goes over your basic coverages that you're going to want to have in place. And I know we're moving fast, so write down any questions you have. At the end, we'll take your questions, spend extra time with you. But in this basic policy, this is for a duplex that we actually insure in Texas, put this policy together. Uh, the replacement cost was 355000 and that's the amount it's going to take to replace that property if it burnt to the ground, and we had to rebuild it and move all the debris and everything, okay? Your personal property is at 12000 Now, this is a duplex, so you've got two units. Personal property, you're going to say, boy, I don't own anything in there, but you do. You're going to own a dishwasher, a microwave, possibly a refrigerator or washer-dryer. So those are things to look at when you look at this coverage. Then you come to loss of rental income, very important. This is the one where if you have a kitchen fire and your tenant moves out while you're repairing it, the insurance company will pay you your rent while your place is getting repaired. They'll only pay it up to the amount of coverage, and on this policy, it's $35,500. We could always increase that amount if, you, if your rents are high enough. And you really want to have about a year's worth of rent in that, so in case something bad happened, you have a year to fully fix your property and get a tenant back in, okay? Then we get to your liability protection. This is offering 300. I would encourage you to do five. I did a quote today for a Marshall Reddit client. Difference between 300,000 and 500,000 on the policy was $2 a year, $2 for $200,000 in liability coverage. So then we get down to your medical payments that will cover your basic medical needs if somebody gets hurt on your property and it's Less than a thousand, you won't get sued, and your deductible. And we're going to talk more about deductibles, but your deductible is really what's going to dictate a lot of the forgiveness on the rate of your policy. One thing that's important to note: uh, Michael went through a lot of information here for you, because this this policy is pretty broad, and this is typically what another broker would give you in in the Texas marketplace, assuming they were actually using the correct dwelling amount, which this happens to be the correct amount. But this is really what we look at as bare bones. We're going to show you a little something different here. And this and this is part of what we do. When Michael mentioned why choose us, when we look to value that property, we got that to three fifty five, not by saying, okay, we want one hundred and thirty five dollars a foot, like some flood insurance carriers will do. What we do is we'll go to the Marshall Reddick links, we'll go to Zillow, Realtor.com. Redfin, we'll do local searches. And the reason we do that is, unless it's brand new property, over a period of time, it is amazing how properties change. And you can go on three different links and have three different square footages. So we're going to look at the preponderance of the information from various links to make sure we get the right information, or at least as right as possible. And we'll look at all those things when we come up with the replacement cost. The interiors, the baths, the exteriors, the systems, wall finishings, everything goes into that. So when people wonder how do we come up to a value, that's how we do it.
But this is what a policy really should look like. Michael, tell me about it. Yeah, now you guys saw the basic policy. It gave you the very basics that you need. And again, they only had 300000 in liability. For $2 more, you go to the half a million. So here's the policy that we would give you. And I'll tell you why it's a great policy. You have your 355, and now you know how we get to those numbers. Then you have what's called extended replacement coverage. And the last policy didn't offer that. And I have a lot of people go, why do I need that? Well, anybody that's ever built anything or ever done any type of remodeling, your contractor will say it'll cost $1,000 to do it. You know he's going to run over. It's going to take longer and wind up being $1,200. So when we say it's $355,000 to replace your home, that's a true cost. But what if you run into a pandemic and things take longer or cost more? We give you an extra 25%, which is $88,000, to rebuild that home. So you're more than covered. Then we offer you your, your personal property, your loss of rental income. Then we get down to the liability protection at a half a million and not 300,000. We do the extended liability coverage, and this is for a property manager so that they can manage your property and handle any claims that come up so that you don't have to be involved at all. Your property manager can contact us and file the claim and work with Safeco or Travelers through the claim, and the, the owner does not have to be involved at all. Uh, and then you've got your medical payments and law and ordinance, which you didn't see on the last policy. Now, law and ordinance is a very important thing, especially on the landlord policy. Every city and county is constantly changing building codes. One day, a, a certain GFI will be what's accepted. A month later, they might change GFIs. Your insurance policy covers to rebuild your home the way it was. So they're going to put in the old GFI, which is not going to be accepted by the uh, inspector. So if you have this coverage, you have $35,000 to get anything up to the ordinance and the law that is required. So they would replace all those GFIs or lights or anything that needs to be replaced to bring it up to the ordinance. And then once again, you hit your deductible. $2,500 on a deductible on a landlord policy is pretty much the sweet spot to get your rate so you cash flow. That way you're taking a little bit of the risk. Uh, for the insurance company, they know you're not going to file a claim for $100. Uh, at the very bottom, you see save up to 5% when you package. So if you bring your homeowner's policy over, you'll get a discount on your landlord. And that's true if you bring your auto and umbrella over as well. And we will quote all of that for you. So here, here are some things that Safeco offers, some endorsements and extra protection that we're going to do for you on your policy. And, and one thing, we, we sort of talked about that a little bit, Michael did rather, about uh, these, these items, but we're hitting this again because this is incredibly important. People ask us to bring the values down, well, and we always say, yeah, well, what if, if you had that total loss? You need to have these elements. These are, this is like a three-legged stool. If you don't have all of these legs, you don't have a stool that will stand up without falling over. Same with the replacement cost aspect. If you buy a decent policy in, in, in Texas or California, or anywhere you buy them, you're going to get a replacement cost policy. You don't, you do not want an extra cash value policy, not ever. Sometimes people will buy that to save a few bucks. That is bad news. But again, what happens if we have an overrun? As Michael said, if you if you build something, it always costs more. There used to be the old rule of thumb if you do a remodel, figure on 150% of the quote for your cost. Insurance repairs are, are remodels on steroids. They just, they always overrun. If it's a total loss, they always overrun. Um, the idea here is to protect you so it doesn't come out of pocket. The idea here is to make sure that we start at the replacement cost value and then we put in that hedge. That hedge is important. We have seen that hedge come into play. So you never want to be without that. And that policy cost is usually about 12 to 20 bucks, depending on the company. The building ordinance is the other leg of that stool. The other leg of that stool, as Michael was mentioning, the changes in the building codes. The building inspector is not going to allow you to put a tenant back into that building unless you have brought it up to grade. Uh, any property over seven years old is going to have several uh, building code changes. And we will help pay for that. Those are basically betterments to your policy. Replacement cost does not include betterment. 
That is what the building ordinance is for. Okay, so here's a, a total loss scenario, and we're gonna we're gonna compare how this works. Okay, on the first side, you see the total loss scenario of three hundred fifty-five thousand that we know we had the place insured for. Okay, so the actual cost to reproduce the home and build it from the ground up was three hundred eighty-six thousand, including the building changes, the building ordinance. Okay, most landlords and most policies will pay you the 355,000 as I showed you on the very first policy slide. They're giving you the 355, they're not giving you law and ordinance and they're not giving you extended. So when the total comes to 386, they're gonna pay you 355 and that extra amount's coming out of your pocket. With our Safeco policy, with the building code law and ordinance with a 25 extra percent in there, so you have 125%, they're gonna pay you the full 386 and you're out of pocket zero. And as Stan mentioned earlier, very important, the whole idea here is to cash flow. So you want a great rate on your insurance policy, but you want to be fully covered in case something happens so you can get a tenant right back in there and continue to cash flow. Okay, now keeping, keeping up with what's going on in the world, additional programs and features that, that we throw out there. Uh, Stan talked about the replacement cost, talked about the rental income, very important. Talked about inspecting your property. A lot of people that are writing you these policies, when I'm quoting against other agencies, they're just giving you the bare bones so to keep the rate down so that they'll get your business. They're not watching out to protecting your asset, which is super important. We look at everything. We look at your roofs. Are they new? We, we look at the neighborhood. We look at everything. We see if we can get you discounts with a homeowner's policy or packaging with an umbrella policy, okay? Um, and then of course, we use Safeco and Travelers because they offer something that is above and beyond. It's a 24 hour, seven day a week service. You can call them at two in the morning and say, boy, I heard Stan and Michael talk yesterday about insurance. I want to increase my coverage. You call them at two in the morning, they'll fix your policy however you would like. So, okay, some exclusions. I, so I just want to interject really quickly. Normally when Stan or Michael do this presentation live, there's like a, a line that is specific for Marshall Reddick clients when you go through, um, through them exclusively. You can talk to a human being rather than going through a phone tree. Like it said, 365, I think it said 66 days a year to emphasize that there's somebody at the end of that line to actually talk to you, a real person, um, even on a holiday at night. You can call and just say, hey, happy holidays, whatever, which I think is so neat um, that they offer that exclusively to our clients that work with them. Yeah, and Tony's absolutely correct about that. What what Tanya remembers is I generally will mention that I call our teams on Christmas Eve, and I do say hi to them because I think they're lonely there, but I want to make sure they're there. But yes. they're but they're they're there, so you know that that Christmas tree can burn overnight and cause a lot of damage to a house, or yeah. people get up in the morning and cook things. All, all heck breaks loose. <laughs> That's then, right. Thank you, Tanya. And it, of course. And then I noticed it quite quiet in the chat box. I saw Barbara wrote something. Do you guys, you know, do umbrella policy? So then I responded back, yes, they do. Please notice that you can ask questions throughout the presentation. Um, if you're anything like me, if I didn't write it down, I won't remember, and then it'll come to me at midnight. So please go ahead and just share your questions so that we could do a Q&A at the end, okay? Perfect. Excellent, thank you, Tanya. And, and as Tanya pointed out, it is 366 is they work leap year as well. So it's every day. Okay, some exclusions. Okay, we already talked about earthquake and land movement. That is a separate policy. Uh, we can quote you an earthquake policy. We write all insurance. We write commercial and every personal line there is. We can write you a flood or quote you a flood, but it does not come with the policy. Okay. Um, Okay, my favorite here is just down the page, damage from freezing pipes while vacant. A lot of landlord owners don't understand that when your property is vacant, it is the most important time to have a property manager. They will go in and make sure that your water's turned off, your pipes won't freeze, because 
if they freeze and break, you will not have coverage. Okay. If your property is vacant for 60 days in a row, your coverage stops. So you need to contact your property manager when your property is vacant and your insurance agent. Because at 158 days, you're running into problems if you're still vacant. You're going to need to call me. I'm going to need to do a different policy for you. Super important. Okay. Um, backup of water uh, and sewer and drains. That is coverage that's offered in certain states, and it's great coverage to have. A lot of people don't realize that if their toilets back up and it causes damage in the house, they don't have coverage unless they have one of these exclusions on their policy. Okay, uh, staying with that, your pollution and mold, obviously, we're going through a lot of uh, health issues in, in the United States and everywhere in the world. Uh, pollution and mold is an exclusion in the policy. Uh, settling and sinking of foundations as well. Uh, you really need to look through this, and we help you do this, okay? Uh, damage to unattached buildings, okay? Unless you have coverage for that, it's not covered. Dog bites, okay? That's a huge one, huge one, okay? Certain breeds are excluded, and we have a list of breeds that are excluded with either Travelers or Safeco. We can give to you so you don't have tenants with dogs, but we actually recommend you don't rent to tenants with dogs. And we recommend you get a renter's policy for that tenant. They can contact us and get a renter's policy to cover their stuff and cover their dog. Also, I highly recommend using Marshall Reddick Property Management because they will cover all of this and they'll make sure you're taken care of. Okay, damage by pests, super important. You're not covered if you have mice in your house. That is that is on you. You need to call it a terminator, okay? Uh, Theft of anything not permanently installed, uh, zoning, maintenance, municipal issues, and normal wear and tear. A lot of people will call and say, I had a tenant move out, the carpet's old, it needs painting. That's normal wear and tear and it's not covered on your policy. Okay, illegal manufacturing. Okay, this has become a huge issue in the last three or five years. We used to always know that People were putting in chemical labs or something. You wanted to watch for that. Now we have the, the medical cannabis grows that are happening in homes. It is illegal, and it's going to break your policy if they have a little grow room in their back room of your rental property. You need to make sure they don't have that, and that falls back to your property manager again. Okay, If they're in there and they are growing their stuff and a light falls over and it burns the house down, you will have lost your home, and you should have had a property manager that inspected the property and made sure that wasn't happening. We actually had a real claim. I hit really briefly where someone had a tenant, paid them all, the tenant paid cash uh, to rent there for the first couple of months. That's usually a tip off, by the way. And he wasn't using property management. Marshall Reddick would never allow that to happen. But this, this person did. And when they finally got the tenant out, they found that the non-weight-bearing walls had been moved. Cost the, the property owner $20,000 to put the walls back in. Because the reason they were moved is because they were running a grow operation. So always, you know, first off, never accept cash for, uh, for rent. And always, always, always use professional property management like Marshall Reddick. Absolutely. And if you're going to take cash in the form of a cashier's check, don't take more than one month. Because if you take two months, you could never evict them during that time frame. Super important. And that's something Marshall Reddick, property manager, will go over with you. They're really good. Okay. I, I mentioned I did real estate and property management for over 20 years. I've listened to Marshall Reddick, uh, property management, do you know seminars. They're really good, really knowledgeable. Okay. We kind of just touched on this. When to be concerned uh, when your tenants won't open the doors. Uh, when they want to give you a year's worth of rent and cash. So have a property manager. Uh, I know Marshall Reddick inspects their properties when they manage them. Uh, I believe it's every six months. It's really good practice to have. They give you reports about your property. It's the way to go. Okay. Liability coverage. This is the other side of the contract. There's two parts of that landlord insurance. One is what happens to the physical prop physical property? What the other one, the other part of the policy is what happens if somebody gets injured in or around my property? And this is what the insurance company will do. Hopefully, 
you will have a minimum of a half a million dollars of liability insurance if somebody's injured. The insurance company will defend for you and they will pay claims for bodily injury or property damage rising out of the property unless it's otherwise excluded. And the defense is over and above your liability insurance. So if you have a half a million dollars of liability insurance, you go the distance, the attorneys settle for $450,000 and there's another $150,000 in defense costs. Safeco's so going to pay for that whole $600,000, even though you had $500,000 on the policy because defense is outside of the limits. Um, again, examples would be trip and fall. Um, Speaking of slow all night, as we mentioned at the very beginning, wrongful eviction. True claim, a tenant was walking out to get her paper, uh, and she and there was water on the uh, front um, pathway. Didn't realize that this particular property had septic, and they didn't realize that the septic had burst. But he took off, flew in the air, came down her left shoulder, crushed it. She was a concert violinist as well as a, as a violin teacher. She had a severe claim, and you can you can be darn certain that she was picking up income uh, as well as uh, as well as, as as medical expenses. So those are things, those are real life examples of why you need decent limits of liability insurance. A absolutely, and just to touch on that real quick, in that particular claim, the landlord had half a million and had an umbrella, so they were covered. They wouldn't have had that umbrella, they probably would have been in trouble. Exclusions are in liability policies just like they are in, in, in your property policies. Certain things are obvious if you if you intended to injure somebody, you throw up an iced um, water bottle at your tenant because you're mad at them, probably not going to have coverage when they bring a lawsuit against you for bodily injury on that. And that sounds crazy, but we've seen things like that. Um, results from the violation of the law and ordinances or, uh, uh, or th that you or someone commits on your behalf. This is why you want professional property management. You, you've, we've had situations where um, people have have repaired their property, not necessarily into code, and then you have an issue with the liability, and that could fall very hard on you if, if, if someone is injured as a result of that situation. If you or your tenant is running a business out of the um, out of the home, your insurance is not going to cover that. If you are, if you don't render professional service, uh, there again, um, we're not going to cover that situ situation. If rather, if you are rendering professional services, and if you have any other locations, um, these policies are one location specific, and then of course, depending upon the jurisdiction you're in, we will not or we will pay punitive damages. It just depends on the jurisdiction. Another, exclu another exclusion you'll see a lot would be uh, your share of a loss assessment. We can ensure that for you under the landlord policy pretty easily. There's a section called uh, loss assessment coverage. If you belong to an HOA, we want you to let us know so that we can throw fifteen dollars to $25,000 of coverage on the loss assessment. So if someone's injured or if the pro there's property damage for which the association doesn't have enough coverage and they assess you, you would have coverage in that situation as long as you have that coverage, but your liability policy unendorsed will not cover that. Workers' compensation. These policies do not take the place of workers' compensation. You use a property manager. You use Marshall Reddick property management. You do not want to be hiring people to work on your property uh, and, and have them call on your property not insured. Marshall Reddick will make sure that that does not happen. They'll only let people on the property that are fully licensed and insured. You don't want people falling out of the trees from 40 feet and find out they don't have workers' compensation coverage. That's a very bad day. Your landlord policy isn't going to cover you or your tenants' use of a boat or car and airplane. It sounds silly to put it there, but we get those questions. We're not going to cover daycare operations, and like Michael said on the property side, we aren't going to cover fungi and pollutants and things of that nature. So now we're going to get into some of the tips uh, to kind of help you out. Uh, insurance is, like many other businesses, there's a lot that's involved in it. it. It's hard to understand until you really get somebody that teaches you, and that's what we're here to do. We're trying to make it a little easier to understand so that when you get this policy, you get the proper protection at the right rate, and, and you know that you're covered. So 
Insider tip number one I touched on a little bit earlier. If your property is vacant for 60 days, you will lose your coverage on the landlord policy. I will need to write you a vacancy policy. Is it a little bit more expensive? It is. But the understanding is that you're looking for a tenant, so hopefully it's only in place for five or ten days at the max. And then we can put your old landlord policy back into place. If you don't do that, you will not have your asset covered. Good news there is using your Marshall Reddick property managers. I think we've had maybe three or four calls in the last couple of years for this coverage. It just doesn't happen. It's a rare situation that you will have, uh, you actually run into this because your property manager can get somebody back in there ASAP. That's right. But if you don't have a property manager, look at those items that are highlighted. Vandalism, not covered. And there's nobody living there to protect it. it glass breakage, theft, burglary, fire. So if your place floods or if it burns down, you are not covered when it's vacant for more than 60 days, okay? Uh, frozen pipes, I touched on this earlier, okay? It's not covered from day one of a vacancy. So if it's winter time, you want a property manager to go in there, either make sure your pipes are wrapped or your water's turned off. Yeah, and once the property is winterized, if for some reason the water would escape and cause damage, then you would be covered because you took you took the proper steps. But if you don't, you just leave the pipes turned on and you're going to have a beautiful uh, ice angel in your living room and you're not going to have any coverage for that damage. That's right. And, and these bottom two solutions, these are the, I can't tell you how important it is. Stay in touch with your insurance agent. You, you should know us by name, call us, ask us questions, let us know when there's a vacancy. But even better yet, your property manager is the one that's protecting your asset. They'll call us. Marshall Reddick Property Management will call us and say, hey, this property has been vacant for 50 days. Can you get a quote ready in case it's not going to rent? Now, that's never happened because I don't know of Marshall Reddick Property Management having a 60-day vacancy. But it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. But keep in touch with your property management company. Never say okay. never, guys. Never say never. Um, well, it all depends. Okay, on we'll say normally. <laughs> how, how about if we say usually? Because yeah. you guys are so good at what you do. How about I say in my five years with Marshall Reddick, it's never happened? Right. No, no, no. Because right. that means that you guys listened to what the property management team had to say. You allowed us to get the property rent ready for the market in the right order, which allowed for a non 60 day vacancy. But there are some landlords that disagree with our suggestions where. Um, you know, it takes a bit longer, but it is very rare. But in my eight years, it's not been many. <laughs> <laughs> very few. Yeah. Thank you, Tanya. So Stan touched on actual cash value versus replacement cost. And I'm going to speed through this because if you're really going to look at an actual cash value policy, you're not, you're not really serious about doing landlord policies. Here's how this works. So you have a claim that's $100,000. Uh, with the depreciation, you can see in the middle line, over 40 years, you've had some depreciation in the home. They're going to pay you $70,000. So $30,000 is going to come out of your pocket to repair the claim if you have an actual cash policy. What you want is the replacement cost that will pay you the full $100,000. Uh, it's pretty simple. And I, I don't know many people that would be willing to risk their investment to save a few dollars. Okay, I touched on this earlier. I think this is a huge, excellent point. Your deductible will really help your rate and how you cash flow. One to two family homes should be a $2,500 deductible. Okay, three to four, 5,000. Now there's times where Stan and I will plug in our quote and we'll see a $2,500 deductible is better for you than a 5,000 because the savings isn't great and we'll let you know that, okay? Your wind and hail deductibles will usually be around 1% to 2%. And that's how to get the best rate. Okay? And, of course, where you buy is going to affect your rate. And that's why Marshall Reddick has this really down. They've looked at the areas. They've made sure that they're good areas. Uh, the higher rates are going to be where your hurricanes and your flooding are, uh, tornado zones, of course, in, like, your Houston areas, certain areas of Florida, not where Marshall Reddick is. And, of course, some of your Carolinas and Georgia areas are just more expensive to insure. We can insure them. They're just going to cost more. Okay? Where your lower rates are. This is going to sound odd, but look where Marshall Reddick is. 
Austin, San Antonio, Clarksville, Oak Grove, Arizona, anywhere in California but a brush area, which is in the the hills. And sometimes that could just be over in Yorba Linda. It doesn't have to be up in Northern California. Indianapolis, Boise, and Florida. Those are some of the, the areas that have the best rates available, and that's where Marshall Reddick's at. Okay, so insider tip number four, what you buy is going to affect your cost. Obviously, a newer property is going to have a little bit lower insurance because they know there's no actual things going on in there. Everything's brand new. Your roof is super important. When you're looking at a property, it's important for you to ask, how old is the roof? And when we're working on your quote, tell us the roof was replaced eight years ago, 10 years ago. Every year makes a difference in what your rate is going to be. The newer the roof, the better the rate, okay? Also, keep it at three to four bedrooms, two and a half, three baths, 2,800 square feet. Once you get past that, you're getting into a, a realm where you're gonna have several different tenants in there and it's a little harder to control, plus your rates will go up and it's a little tougher to cash flow. One thing we wanted to mention about that too is, is we were kind of looking at that as a single family home. Um, there's nothing wrong with buying a 4,900 square foot property if it's four units. Exactly. Nothing at all. Yep, good point. Also, no pools. Okay, I, I know pools look pretty, uh, your tenants love them, but pools are a liability claim waiting to happen. Uh, I'm going to go in depth when we talk about an umbrella policy of how a pool is a bad idea on a rental property. Okay, and then of course, uh, Clue, which is a rental history, which is run in every state except for California. So that's something to keep in mind too, and we'll go over that with you when you when we quote your properties. Insurance score. This is this is important stuff. The um, again, this is an outside of California situation. Some people are surprised when we ask them about uh, may we have your birth date. And they're wondering why. Well, the reason is is because that's kind of goes with the reporting mechanisms. We look at the property you own and we look at the property that's being sold to you and together we put together what kind of claims that have occurred on that property because usually there's information to that effect. And if you have a really great credit score, and typically you will, the, uh, you, you would come into this with a good credit score and working with REIT, they help you pump that up. Um, you put that all together, that will affect your rate and it can be huge swings. The property I used to own in Clarksville, I rated it against someone because I couldn't figure out why their rates were so high on this other property. I, I put his information into my own property and my property premium went up 50% had I been him. So keeping your credit scores at good levels, you know, get above that 720 number and you'll get the better insurance rates. It's not just us, that's most insurance companies. Paying in full, this is one of Michael's favorites. You get a pay in full discount if you let the lender pay your policy. You pay them the down payment at the close of escrow. And they want the full year anyway. Let them collect from you monthly for the premium. They pay the premium in full each year. You get a discount. Why wouldn't you do that? And one of the things that's very important is when you're with our particular program, the Marshall Reddick program, uh, we're going to offer you policies if you have more than six to ten units. Most companies won't do that. Our exclusive program will. We can go up to 20 to 25 units um, and you'll find maybe one other company that might do that. So that, that's important stuff because the more you put together, the better your rates are going to be ultimately. That's right. Now I, ta I talked on this a little earlier about uh, tenants' dogs can be a challenge. Of course, Number one, I would recommend not renting to tenants with dogs, but you know a lot of us are animal lovers like myself, so you want to require your tenant to buy a renter's policy, and that's on them, and that will help ensure their dog biting somebody as well. Uh, but once again, there are exclusions to breeds, so you want to contact us and, and make sure that particular dog is on the okay list, okay? Um, then a lot of uh, companies, when you're out shopping, they have what's called a full pure animal exclusion. So they will not cover anything that has to do with the dog. So when you're shopping policies, it's really important to know that you're shopping apples to apples. Okay. And then of course there's the, the special liability markets. If you have a dog that's tough to place, you can, you can get additional insurance. But once again, we recommend either you don't do it, you have them get a renter's policy, 
and make sure that the dog is of an approved breed. So tenants can be a challenge. Boy, I know this. I did property management for a while. Uh, always have them get a renter's insurance policy. They're super cheap. They're, they're under $200 a year, uh, depending on how much personal property and liability they want. But it, once a person has their own renter's policy, they seem to respect your, your property a little bit more. They take a little bit more uh, on-hands approach to it. Uh, also, if a tenant's evicted and vandalizes the home, most, and when I say most, almost all policies will exclude that. Our Safeco policy will cover vandalism if the person is moving out and they vandalize your property. Not normal wear and tear, but they'll cover vandalism. Okay, loss of rental income we touched on. I think this is one of the most important things when you're looking at your cash flow. So as rents are going up, you need to keep an eye on, make sure that your lost rent number is going to fit your rent for about a year so that if any claim happens, you have full coverage and you're getting your rental income no matter what, okay? So this example, your normal number is 10% of your coverage A, which is your replacement cost. So 150,000, that would give you 15,000 of your lost rent income. Most areas, that's okay. If you're in California, that's not gonna cover it. You're gonna want us to increase that number. Okay, keep your information current so important because I think insur your insurance agent seems to fall somewhere near the ice cream truck guy of who you tell when you move. It's so important that if you change lenders, you let us know, okay? Because if we're billing your lender and it's no longer your lender, they're not going to pay the policy. The policy is going to get canceled. You're not going to have coverage. If you move and we mail your invoice to you because you're paying the bill and you're not having it impounded by the bank, and you're no longer at that address, your policy cancels because it didn't get paid. Super important to keep us in the loop. Make sure that your lender lets us know if there's a new lender, or you do. Let us know if you move. Super important. Email and phone number, everything, because that's the way we can tell you how your asset's being protected. Okay. When is a million dollars less than a half a million? Sounds kind of silly, but it depends on the kind of policy you buy. We should, when we sell policies, we're using a personal insurance form. We're using our Safeco or our Travelers form predominantly. And they pay on what's called an occurrence basis. Every time someone slips and falls and takes a header off your porch, you have up to half a million dollars of coverage during the year. On a business policy form, which you'll see a lot from companies like uh, uh, State Farm and uh, Farmers, they will offer a what they call a business form. Nationwide sells this also. They are aggregate limits. Aggregate is an important word. What that means is that million dollars is the most they will pay during the year. You have three claims and two of them exceed a million dollars. The third claim is not going to get paid because that's all they will pay during the life of the policy. So I think that's how you can see the difference. That's why a half a million is more. You worry about high limits of, of liability, you buy an umbrella policy. And again, kind of bringing it back full circle, this is this is crucial. We're gonna hit it again and we'll get, go for this quickly. Use your deductible strategically across all your policies. The more policies you buy, the larger your portfolio gets, the larger deductible you can absorb. That's how you keep your pricing in check. Always uh, complete a comprehensive re insurance review so that you know your vulnerabilities. And the most important part, after of course your wonderful insurance agents in your insurance program, is your property management. You're going to have a horrible, horrible experience in, in owning property if you do not have property management. And that extends to insurance as well. Okay, umbrella policy. Before I started working in the insurance business, I had no clue what an umbrella policy really was. You want an umbrella policy. Everybody wants one. If you're an 18 year old kid just getting started, you want one. They're about a dollar a day until you start getting more assets and then they get a little more expensive. Umbrella policy is exactly like it sounds. When you open an umbrella, it covers everything that is around you, all your assets. Your umbrella policy will cover your landlord policies, your home, your autos, your boats. It will basically cover all of your assets. And obviously the more landlord policies you get, 
you definitely want an umbrella policy because you want that extra million dollars of liability coverage, okay? And with Safeco, they offer what's called a real umbrella policy. So theirs will go to, say, let's say you go to Italy and you're vacationing, the umbrella policy follows you out of the United States. Most umbrella policies will not leave the United States. Okay, umbrella. Now, I, I said I would do this quickly, but a quick story of why you don't have a pool in your landlord, landlord policy property. Uh, we had a gentleman uh, that lived next door to the property, had a few cocktails, decided to jump the fence and swim in the pool, broke his back, uh, sued the homeowner, and won. So you can imagine that cost a lot of money. Thank goodness they had an umbrella policy that went over their half a million of insurance. Uh, it's crazy what can happen, but no pool, no guy jumping your fence, no pool, no kids drowning, no pool, no liability for the pool area, okay? And as we're going through this here, you can kind of see how this is all set up. You want to bundle all your policies together. So put your auto, your home, your rental properties, put them all under an umbrella, all with one company, and you get all your discounts. So when I write your uh, homeowner's policy, all your landlord policies get discounts. When I write your umbrella policy in your auto, you get discounts. It's really important to know that. So we uh, obviously, we have our uh, brick and mortar offices, have one in Los Alamitos, one up in Anaheim Hills, but we work with Safeco and Travelers as we said. They have the 24 hour a day, seven day aligned service for the Marshall Reddick clients. Okay, so you guys have a special number you call into, or you can contact Travelers the same way, or you get us. And we are pretty much here all the time. Stan is here all the time. I actually take time to sleep once in a while. But um, hopefully you guys have some questions. Hopefully you learned something. Uh, our numbers and email addresses are here. Please contact us. We uh, really look forward to working with you. And Tanya, I think you have some stuff to go over still? We sure do. There are a ton of questions for you guys um you know just as kind of like a promise to you guys is i'm going to give stan and michael all of these questions that you all have asked throughout the presentation i've been kind of typing back throughout to try to you know cover as much as i can but i um i wanted to just let you guys know that um so let's go ahead and go over a couple questions so a couple people actually asked this if um is there any way that that they can get a discount on uh property insurance if they're you know buying a property all cash there's no lender involved is there any way to get a discount on any any properties if they pay in full for the year or if there's no loan attached to it? Sometimes you might see a slightly reduced rate if the, in that situation, but it's it, that varies by state. It's weird. It, it, that, that's an oddity. Sometimes you'll see a little slightly lower rate, but usually it's pretty insignificant. Let me put it this way. I would never pay cash um for the savings on the insurance it just doesn't make sense it's okay. not going to be significant if it is we're talking very small differences in premium okay. if at all all right sounds good um so a lot of people circled around the dog question about dog insurance um and so let me do like a two for one here if there's a claim done on a property um will they expect their insurance policy to increase um so if if the tenant has a dog and the tenant's dog bites somebody and the tenant doesn't have it his, his or her own insurance and the inter enterprising legal counsel for the person who got bit comes after the property owner and you have a claim, yes, that you will lose your loss-free discounts if you've, owned the, if you've had the insurance for a while. And depending on the state you're in, it will increase your premium. California is very different. California doesn't have, let me rephrase that, you see very few companies that have rating tiers. 
usually it's acceptable or it's not acceptable, and about the only thing you get is a loss free discount in terms of claims aspects. In some states, like Arizona, they have six tiers. So your premium could increase six times, theoretically. I've never seen that happen. The worst we've seen of an increase is probably doubling. Mm-hmm. But um, but uh, but sure, a dog bite would fall right in line uh, with it, with anything else should it come back on you. Um, mm-hmm. That's why we think it's fair that as a part of the rental agreement that you always insert a, a, a paragraph that the tenant have insurance. Whether or not they come back and say, well, I have to have a dog because I'm a, an emotional support dog, great. Just give us your insurance policy. Right. That in, anybody, I, I've not heard of that being rejected anywhere. Right. And as long as they have a, a renter's policy, the insurance will go after that amount first prior to coming out, prior to going after the landlord. Right. So one thing here, definitely make all your tenants get <laughs> renter's insurance. Um and it is is it breed specific that you guys allow on um policies well yeah co- companies don't like and and, and they, they vary a lot by companies but travelers and safe goals are, are, are pretty similar um they have they don't like they don't like akitas and chows dobermans are cute but they but they don't like them pit bulls forget it Although if you got in the pit bull, it's an emotional support dog, you're stuck. Uh, uh, I don't think many people have a Staffordshire bull terrier, but should you? No good, no good. (laughs) If you have Carl for a pet, as cute as they are, Rottweiler is not a favorite animal to insurance companies. If you don't like anything that's a wolf or a coyote hybrid, you don't see many of those, but, you know, they don't like those. Basically, it's the obvious ones. The easiest way to break it down, so you remember, they don't like mastiffs, and they don't like dogs that have uh, reputations as attack dogs that are that appear in the paper every week. And, and people can always call us and ask us what specific breeds, and we can go over it with them. Sure, but, th- but those are the highlights of the breed. Okay, and then here's another question about um, the property, like say a sewer line or a, a you know a drain line, something like that. Are those um, policies that could be added to a normal insurance policy? If if you're talking about, are you talking about the repair of the line itself, or are you talking about uh, the backup of the line? Can, um, can both. Do, let me, of course, of course, you you don't know. Let me answer it both ways. Okay, does Dan? You're looking. I'm sorry, Tanya. Excuse me. Um, the uh, excuse me. Like, yeah, hey, we're. Just, I'm just used to talking to people, you know. Anyway, so if you have a service line situation, some companies, I think our Travelers Plan has a service line buyback in most states. Our Safeco policy does not. We don't see those claims happen very often. If you can get that coverage, typically the coverage is limited to around ten thousand dollars. Um, on a homeowner's policy, all the companies offer those. So that will vary company to company. That's a newer coverage. Two or three years from now, everybody will be offering it on all the policies. It's just something new that's hit. If you have um, a backup of a sewer and drain, like with my sister in her condominium, the tree roots invaded her sewer line and water came up and backed up. Just It took just one flush. And it all came back. Right. Uh, that is coverage you can't purchase. Michael hit that pretty hard. He, uh, we're a believer in that. It's hard to get people to buy that coverage, but it's important. It won't happen too often, but when it happens, it's it's a mess. So, so that's, that's the coverage that you can buy. So that is that insurable is if it's something like that. It, yeah. If it's water backup, there, there's a we can put that on the policy. It doesn't naturally come with it. We have to add it in. Uh, it's not available in all states, but most, and and that's not a lot of money per year. I mean, talking maybe thirty, thirty-five dollars a year. But when you're talking about the main lines out front, that coverage for a landlord policy is not available yet. Okay, great. And and that is available in California. Yeah, on homeowner policies, yes. Now, oddly enough, the California policies don't like backup. 
for rental properties. I don't know what that's about, but they don't. Not for rental, but only for personal. Good to know. Um, Correct. Uh, in, in, yeah, in California. Outside yeah, of California, they'll sell it pretty quickly. I don't know what that's about. Okay. Okay. Good to know. And then someone asked, my property is titled under an LLC versus just your regular name. Um, you know, how should my insurance be written if it's any different? Kind of depends upon, and, and we'll give you the answer, but we're going to start off by saying it depends a lot about what your financial advisor and your attorney says. And they all are, they all are going to have different points of view on this thing. There's no real consistency to it that we have seen. So all we know is what we see. We have some companies um, outside of California, travelers will do it sometimes depending on the state, foremost. but we have foremost that will write, as an insurance company, will write dwelling fire policies anywhere using the, um, the, the LLC, or sometimes the LLC is mixed into a self-directed IRA, and they will make that entity be the name on the policy. They still are going to want to know who you are. You're not invisible. They're still are going to ask information about you, the purchaser of the property. Uh, the big thing that they want to make sure, and this question is always asked, is that, is that we're not using your commercial contracting company, that's an LLC, as a named insured on the policy. Safeco or Travelers or Foremost, none of those companies want to end up protecting your business, not your landlord business, but your other business by virtue of the fact that this LLC is sitting on the policy, and that sounds kind of extreme, but it happened. So the question you will be asked is, is this just for the property? If it is, then they will say, foremost will take all comers. Safe goes a little more discerning. Travelers are usually pretty good about taking that. So, yeah. so on a, just a quick side note there, Tanya, uh, it, it, it depends on how you want it, the policy to be listed. We can do just the LLC with certain companies, in other companies, you're going to have the LLC named along with you. Okay, yeah, that's the great because they are attached to a human being at that point. Um, Correct. Yeah, good. And then also, um, someone asked about the umbrella policy. It says, you know, I wasn't able to get an umbrella policy because their insurance didn't cover more than four rental properties. Is there a limit to? How many properties can be under an umbrella policy? Well, th there are, but we have special deals, especially with like Safeco. We can put 20 to 25 rental properties under our umbrella with Safeco. We can put your home under there, your vehicles, all those rental properties. So it depends. There, there, and I don't want to throw uh, a name out there. I almost did. But there's an insurance carrier I know of that will do no more than four uh, landlord policies under their umbrella. That person can just give us a call and we can either place a standalone umbrella for them or we can get all their policies with Safeco or Travelers. Right. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So, um, you know, keep the questions flooding in, guys, because, again, like I said, I'm going to send all these questions to Michael and Stan. Um, take a picture of this screen. Um, you know, I'm happy there's only one of me, but there's a hundred of you guys. So um, just, you know, please keep the questions coming. Um, let's just get through this because I want to be mindful of everybody's time, just kind of wrap up the the presentation. Um, you know, so let's, let's keep moving forward, but you guys have a ton of questions to keep answering um, on one-on-ones. <laughs> so we can go that to the next fun. slide. That would be awesome. All right. So that was the, do you have any questions now after you've heard all this information, what's next? So here's a little bit about Marshall Reddick, the power team. Um, there are other advisors like myself at the company. Um, we have lenders, we have realtors, building inspectors, insurance agents, number five is what we're here for. And then the end all be all, good property management. Uh, next slide. Um, now, if you all are new to us, you found us online, a friend referred you, I, hi I really want to highlight our learn tab. So when you're on Marshall Reddick Real Estate, 
um, there is over, you know, 300 recorded presentations just like this. Tomorrow, once we upload everything, the presentation will be uploaded here and you can watch it at your leisure. I will be sending this to you in case you missed anything along with the um, presentation PowerPoint so that you can go back and look at slides that you want to look at. But any topic you're interested in, feel free to call me, email me, and I'll point you to the right direction and then give you insight specifically to all of your questions. Um, let's go on to the next slide. Um, now, you don't know me quite yet, or actually a lot of you do that are on here, um, but um, of course, people that are new, check us out online. See who who we are, what we do. Don't trust just like, hey, we're an awesome company. We've been around forever. Go ahead and check it out. Um, I am on the members team. Um, feel free to read my reviews before you talk to me so that we can already know one another before we move forward on any um, future topics. And then I think the next two slides and then we're done. So I would love for you guys to be a part of this collage eventually. Um, but I absolutely love what I do. It's my passion. And then I think the final slide is to connect with us, connect with me. Um, again, this is my contact information. I do want to be mindful of your time. Um, you know, it's our most precious commodity <laughs> that we have. So thank you all so much. And we really enjoyed um, your time with us, Michael and Stan. Thank you so much for joining us all this evening.